What's up guys? I'm just a gamer and I'm back with a reaction video. Uh, again, TGS is happening and I'm a bit late, but uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 had a very lengthy overview trailer going over gameplay and stuff that I really want to check out. I have not seen it yet, have not heard anything about it yet, so I'm going into this completely blind. And yeah, again, Dragon Dogma, the first game, is a game I played, I think... A little bit but then for I don't know what it was about that game but I just got overwhelmed and I just couldn't continue so like I have very limited knowledge on the first Dragon's Dogma and I'm but I always hear amazing and exciting things from people who just absolutely adore this game I can only imagine the sequel is just gonna be even better so yeah I'm excited to see what they're gonna show here so enough of me talking let's get into it Look good. <laughs> Geralt? It's the white hair made me think Geralt for some reason. Whoa. They just use that ogre as a bridge? Is that something you do in the first game? Like, Hello, use everyone. monsters as a bridge like that? I'm Itano, the director of Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon's Dogma 2 is a narrative-driven action RPG set in an immersive fantasy world designed to place player choice at the heart of the gameplay experience. The action gameplay is designed to challenge your creativity, and although this is a single-player adventure, AI-controlled companions will accompany you throughout the experience. Today, I'd like to show you a little of what you can expect from the world of Dragon's Dogma 2 with this new gameplay footage. In Dragon's Dogma 2, up to three AI-controlled beings called pawns can join you on your adventures. Players can choose from four starting vocations that determine how they will play. Of course, you will be able to change your vocation at any time by visiting vocation guilds. For now, let's look at the fighter vocation. Wielding a one-handed sword and shield, the fighter excels in melee combat. As a fighter, you can cut down enemies with a sword and protect yourself and your party using your shield. I don't know why, but... As we keep going, we can see some harpies in the distance. I don't know why, but what, what, just this whole thing when he's saying fighter and what he can do, in my mind, I think of that Joe Cat video for uh, Crap's Guide to D&D &D for Fighter, where he's just like, hmm, I wonder what it does. It's a gosh darn mystery. Who knows? And I just, for whatever reason, I just thought of that immediately when he started talking about the fighter. Uh, sorry, sorry. As an archer, you'll be better suited to take down enemies above you. Let's see what they can do. The archer is a vocation that uses a bow and arrow to attack enemies from a distance. Make full use of your arsenal, including exploding or blighting arrows. You can also aim at your enemies like a third-person shooter. The monsters of Dragon's Dogma 2 behave organically in the world around them, and will even react to players by using their wits against you. Next, I would like to show you the mage in action. Mages excel at long-range magical attacks, as well as healing and support spells that bolster your party with various enchantments to give allies an advantage in battle. The more advanced and powerful the magic is, the longer the incantation will take. In addition to the pawns you adventure with, you will occasionally act with other inhabitants of the world. What's this? We're trapped! A troll, right? Or an ogre? No, it's a troll. Last 
Lastly, let's take a look at the thief. As a thief, you use daggers to strike at your enemies, relying on agility and quick attacks. Use swift step to quickly move away from enemies after an attack. The key strategy for the thief against massive monsters is to find openings and cling on to the enemy to deal damage. I thought the rogue head -on is always an did option, that. But it's a good idea to utilize the environment around you while engaging with enemies. Between your chosen vocation, diverse terrains, and the particular monster you're up against, each encounter challenges players and their party to use their creativity to succeed. Two nations prosper in the world of Dragon's Dogma 2. Cool. Vermund, the human kingdom, and Batal, the land of Bistrin. In Vermund, the Arisen who slay the dragon have ruled as kings for generations. This land of lush meadows and rolling hills is ripe for exploration. In contrast, Batal is a rugged canyon nation with a city built on the site of ancient ruins. It is home to the Bistrin and their unique culture. The nation of Batal offers players a different experience from the human kingdom with diverse environments to explore and monsters to encounter. I wonder if in your adventures, picking you your race determines where you start. Here. Some business with the apothecary, sir. Other times, you might receive quests from people who you aid. Thank heavens. Thought I'd never make it. But I might be so bold as to impose upon you again. Would you be willing to accompany me to the cenotaph and safeguard me from harm? Pawns with knowledge of a quest may be able to guide you to the right location, but it is up to the player to decide whether to follow them or not. Pawns support you throughout your adventures and may come to your aid when you are in trouble. Pretty sure that wasn't the first game. To complete your quest, you can ride ox carts to travel to major locations. Could be wrong, though. But be aware, as you might get attacked en route to your destination and have to decide how to tackle the situation. During the ride, you can choose to close your eyes to quickly arrive at your destination. Time is ever passing, even while riding an ox cart, and the environment around the player constantly changes. Nighttime is especially dangerous. With no light to eliminate your surroundings, you will be enveloped in pitch black darkness where you can't even see your feet. No dark vision? Also, there are dangerous monsters that only appear at night, so you need to be careful when adventuring in the dark. If you have a camping kit, you can find a campsite to spend the night and recover your health. Good evening, Arisen. Uh. It is the honor of my life to share your journey, Arisen. <laughs> it's kind of weird hearing to wrap up, that voice like to from her. Some advanced vocations that become available as you progress in the story. The Mystic Spear Hand combines magic attacks and weapon based physical attacks. So, fighter and mage? Rounder, they use their duo spear at close range and magic at long range. They can also use magic to block an enemy's movement or throw multiple items at once. The Magic Archer is a vocation that further specializes in long-range attacks with magical arrows. On top of healing and providing support to your allies, they can learn a skill that releases a powerful attack over a wide area in exchange for reducing their own maximum HP. And of course, there are other unique vocations you can look forward to. Really? We have a playable version of Dragon's Dogma that sounds 2 kind of... at the Tokyo Game Show Capcom booth. Depending on the choices they make, each player can experience very different playthroughs. We're very much looking forward to the impressions of those who get a chance to play. Dragon's Dogma 2 is being developed for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, and Steam. Please stay tuned for more information. Thank you. I swear, Magic Archers 
in games, D and D, they just can never get a break. They're always regulated to like something people don't want. Cool. All right, that was a nine-minute deep dive into Dragon Dogma 2 gameplay, story, world, and yeah, looks really good. Again, like I have very little experience with the first game. Like, it, I just got I I got like an hour or two in, and then I was just overwhelmed, and I just quit. I, I have to see if maybe if I get the chance, I will go back to it, try to get back into it. But regardless, what I saw there was really really cool. Obviously, the I know every character can mount i'm pretty sure but i could have sworn in the first game there was no thief it was rogue i could have sworn it was rogue. maybe i'm misremembering that but i'm pretty sure it was like a rogue class that let you like uh jump onto them and do that damage but I, everybody can now but it looks like they switched it to where like specifically the thief it takes even more benefit of it um and then yeah like i was saying earlier like the, the mad the, the advanced classes the magic archer man yeah, like, I just remember in D&D, uh, Arcane Archer, I was like, oh my god, that sounds so awesome. Then I read what it can do, and I was like, oh, this is kind of lame. And it's just like, and there's a, obviously there's a bunch of homebrews and stuff like that that was like way better. And I just find it funny, again, that like, <laughs> Arcane Archers or Magic Archers never seem to be what characters want. Because that having that one big attack at the cost of half your HP is like oh uh, well i mean do they have offensive abilities like with their arrows as well magic arrows as well and it looks like what they showed was just like he said support and healing and it was just like ah, uh, kind of hoping you know you could use your magic arrows to like do magic damage throw fire ice whatever do stuff and they're still nope i'm off on a different tangent complaining about something different back to the game game looks good really good and again there's like just so many things that i'm not sure about like that the troll like hitting him in the knees and they can fall back and, and making max as a bridge was that in the first game is that something you could do i just don't know but it looked amazing and awesome and then like uh i'm wondering if depending on your the race you pick do you start off in the different you know different kingdoms like if you pick a human you'll start in the human territory or if you pick the beastkin will you start in the beastkin territory i mean that'd be kind of cool because i mean if, if that's the case i would actually rather start in the beastkin territory for whatever reason it just looks more appealing to me and yeah man the game just looks really good really fun and i'm rooting for it i really hope it's good and again maybe if i get the chance i can jump back and i can try jumping back into the first one before the second one comes out but yeah, those are my thoughts. That's my reaction. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or comment down below. I'd appreciate any feedback. Subscribe. I'm streaming on Twitch, so please consider following me there at twitch.tv slash justthegamerink. I'll together the word, or you can click the link below. But thanks for watching, and until next time, take care and have a good game.